good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells Europe here at Hanover Fairground in the year of 2023. I welcome everyone to have a seat, have a complimentary drinks. The first row is still half empty, so my goal for this day is to have the first row completely filled up. My name is Mona. I'm the moderator for the day in the, uh, for the, day in the technical forum. We will be having technical discussions, we'll have talks, you can enjoy free knowledge. And we will have Mr. Dr. Andres Kruger, the head of the technology from Beckert, and we will be talking about the next generation PTLs for PEM water electrolyzers. Welcome. Hey. Yes, thank you for that introduction. Yes, okay, so um, I wanted to give a short uh, overview of uh, Beckert. So we are a steel uh, wire transformation and coating company. Uh, the company is organized in four main uh, groups. Uh, the first is rubber reinforcement, which is also the majority of our uh, uh, sales. Uh, it is for tire cords, uh, for reinforcement of uh, the, the, the rubber. Uh, the second part is uh, steel wire solutions. Um, that's for agriculture applications. Uh, the, the third one is a speciality business uh, that focus um, also on fiber technologies, and this is also where the uh, hydrogen topic is uh, currently located. And then we have uh, BBRG, which uh, focuses on advanced uh, ropes and cords uh, for mooring lines uh, for the renewable energy sector. Um, yeah. So I also wanted to, to give you an indication of uh, where Beckert uh, produces and supply components uh, to the hydrogen and energy transition. Uh, it's not just uh, in uh, hydrogen or electrolysis, it's also for uh, offshore wind turbines, so the mooring lines that uh, connect uh, these uh, platforms to the seabed. Uh, we also have uh, reinforcement of uh, hydrogen pipelines for transmission of hydrogen. Um, which uh, is for the hydrogen distribution part. Uh, and for example, we also uh, supply some components uh, for hydrogen burners uh, for the heating uh, industry. So it's quite a, a range of uh, products uh, that we supply. Uh, but of course, today we'll talk about electrolysis and PTL, so these uh, porous uh, transport uh, layers. Um, so Beckert is a component supplier. We do not uh, produce and assemble and sell stacks. Um, of course, uh, there are several components uh, in a stack, but we focus on the PTL, so the porous transport layer, uh, specifically on the anode side, uh, because we produce uh, titanium fiber felt. Um, and what we can do is uh, we can uh, control the parameters of these PTLs. So you can uh, opt for a dense uh, material, then we use fine fibers uh, in, the, in, the, in the product, uh, or you can have an open structure then we use coarser fibers. Uh, so it really depends on our customer, and we are flexible between these two maximum points, right? Uh, so you can have something in between as well. So uh, we really do work closely with our customers to understand their needs in terms of pressure drop, uh, conductivity, and these type of things. So when we look at uh, innovation drivers, uh, for our customers at least, uh, they focus, of course, on CapEx, uh, OPEX, and durability. Um, and what we do is uh, we look into the electrolyzer technologies behind uh, these innovations. So for today, we'll focus on the uh, OPEX conversation. And that, uh, of course, the low hanging fruit is uh, to go for thin membranes um, and, of course, uh, protective coatings, right? Uh, that, that helps you with the durability and lifetime of these components. So when we look at uh, ultra thin, thin membranes, what that means for us on the PTL side is that we really focus on uh, fine meshed uh, 3D structures um, to allow us to, to reach ultra low roughnesses of the PTLs. So we really need a soft mattress, I would say, uh, for this uh, membrane to lie on. Um, that helps us on the efficiency side. Uh, of course, we also need uh, some protective coatings on our uh, titanium uh, fibers because they do oxidize. Uh, not as fast, uh, but they do uh, over these lifetimes. Um, so that, of course, uh, helps us also with uh, reducing the contact resistance between the catalyst layer and our surface. Uh, so we have to do some interface engineering to reduce these uh, effects that we see. So what we can do um, in terms of... Uh, 
allowing our customers to really use ultra-thin membranes uh, is to use, uh, as you can see in the picture here, uh, fiber diameters of these fibers that vary, right? Uh, so you can, you can uh, control the gradient uh, over the thickness of our PTLs. Um, so what you see here, basically, it's uh, the backing layer is something like uh, 35 microns in fiber diameter, and the top layer would be above 10 microns. Uh, so this already allows our customers to have a, a better membrane support, um, which, of course, improves their, uh, their efficiency. But this is not the final step. Uh, so we are looking into engineering this interface uh, for a next generation PTL. Of course, I cannot give you the details uh, of what we do, uh, but it is focused on membrane support, contact resistance, um, and our initial uh, results, as you can see in the graph in the middle, is uh, that we do see already just by controlling the porosity and roughness of the surface that is in contact with the anode that we can increase the electrochemical performance. And from EIS data, we can connect it at least uh, to a reduction in contact uh, resistances. So you can imagine if you have a very fine and well-defined surface, the contact points between the actual titanium fibers and the catalyst is increased. So basically a surface area increasing. Um, yes. Then the next point uh, for us to keep uh, our materials durable over, say, a target of 100,000 hours is that, of course, we have to coat them with a a corrosive resistant uh, material, typically platinum. Uh, and what you can see in the top left is an un uncoated PTL versus a coated PTL, so our standard coating on the top uh, right. Uh, and following that uh, below is a comparison to our standard uh, coating that we have today versus our low PGM content coating. So you can already see a reduction in the thickness, which is uh, what we are targeting. But when we do these coatings, we really focus on uh, a good adhesion of the platinum on our fibers. So of course, it comes with pretreatment and cleaning and really controlling the process of how we deposit these uh, PGMs on our fibers. Um, and of course, to have a really good homogeneous coating uh, so that we can really keep um, the platinum where we need it and not have a, a weak spot uh, in the coating material. Uh, so, of course, we also do uh, electrical contact uh, resistance measurements as a function of the contact pressure. And as you can see here, that uh, at least for the uh, PGM content uh, that we are testing at the moment, is that uh, we do see very favorable results, right? Uh, which is uh, good for us. Um, but the advantage also is that we can control the thickness of these layers. So if our customers really want to have an extremely long lifetime on the PTLs, we can increase the uh, thickness. Of course, it comes with a cost, but it comes with the benefit of having a, a stable PTL for the long run. Um, we also do uh, some stability tests. What I show here is uh, really the, uh, the starting point of what we do. Um, so you can see that the comparison between our standard pl uh, PT uh, platinum coating and the low loadings, and also we have uh, one topic, uh, ultra low loadings. So that is uh, an order magnitude lower. Uh, do show some promising results uh, in the short term. Of course, we have to do more development uh, to test the durability over several thousand hours, uh, but the initial steps uh, look promising. One thing that we, of course, uh, also look into, and that's a cost uh, driver, is uh, PGM alternatives. Uh, and what I can say at this point is that it is, uh, at least on the short term, quite uh, promising. Um, but that will require quite a significant uh, amount of uh, research also to, to make sure that our customers are comfortable for us to, to, to move uh, to PGM-free uh, materials. Yes. So we are expanding, of course, uh, right? Uh, all of our customers have really good uh, uh, outlooks on what they need to sell and uh, provide. Uh, so part of this expansion is uh, the uh, building of a hydrogen competence center. Um, this will be located in Belgium in our headquarters, um, which is part of R&D. And um, <coughs> what we will have there is uh, basically standard uh, test equipment for PEM and AEM. Uh, because what I can also mention is that uh, we do produce the titanium fiber felts today, but we can also produce it in stainless steel or nickel. So, of course, AEM is also very interesting for us. Uh, we have some standard characterization techniques, XC2 testing, um, and what we really focus on uh, in the next uh, six months is to, to have a really strong external partner network. We do have one that, uh, already um, to help us uh, with protocol developments, analysis of the data, 
Uh, so we really look into having a global presence, uh, not just for production, but also for the testing uh, infrastructure. Yeah, so just to give one uh, slide on our plans for expansion, um, is that uh, already uh, in 2023, we will expand uh, two existing plants uh, in Asia uh, to reach a capacity of just over one gigawatt. Uh, of course, this is slightly dependent on the efficiency that we mentioned, but uh, it's, a, it's a reference point. Um, and our target for next year is to have uh, production capacity uh, over two gigawatts. Uh, that will include an expansion of a plant in Belgium. Uh, also have a good uh, R&D uh, uh, leg to that uh, production plant. But our real uh, long-term focus uh, is in 2025. We want to have a gigafactory uh, commissioned uh, to bring us to a multi-gigawatt uh, platform. It really helps our customers as well because if we industrialize, we can uh, talk about uh, the cost uh, reduction potential. Um, so, yes. So, again, um, if you want to know more about our standard product uh, that I mentioned, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, follow our talk in the public forum on the 20th, uh, 20 past 1, uh, where my colleague will discuss uh, the standard products. And of course, please feel free to visit our booth in F07, uh, because as I mentioned, we are planning to expand a lot. Uh, so we have a lot of opportunities uh, also to come work for us. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope there's time for questions. Yes, thank you very Fantastic. much. Um, Dr. Amnes Kruger is here to answer your questions at this time as well. So let me know if you have a question, maybe you can raise your hand. Yes, so you can also take your question to the booth and yep. discuss it in more detail. I get this, this is a public forum, we are live streaming, so you don't want to ask the questions. All right, now here. So then give him a warm applause. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity.